Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechGeek webinar series, our endeavor to impart techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Advanced Mobile Application Testing and this is the 28th session in the software testing series. Our guest speaker today is Mr. Ravindran and Tony Sami. QA Head Nimbus. Ravindran is the QA Head of Nimbus, a mobile application that has 150 million registered users in the world. A master's is com in computer science. He is currently located in Gurgaon. He has got great experience in the mobile technology ecosystem, apps, cloud, app markets, ad networks, and app payments, automated functional tests, Calabash iOS, Calabash Android, securely specialized in QA function. Ravindran's international experience and understanding of different cultures helps him to build and run a great QA team in Nimbus. He's a strong supporter for automation, performance testing, and generating innovation within the organization. His leadership qualities help organizations to set up teams to deliver greater amount of productivity. His abilities with respect to team play, people management, new ways of working, mentoring young talents had helped organizations to keep the people highly motivated all the time. He likes to work closely with semiconductor, OEMs, mobile application makers or anything that goes with two mobile and handheld devices. He loves to perform non-functional testing such as usability and performance. He has special interest in mobile applications, automation, semiconductors, 2D, 3D graphics, Windows Phone, Android, iPhone, Symbian, J2ME, Plagueberry application testing, artificial intelligence, robotics, etc. So, without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you, Ravindran. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. So, um, um, thanks for uh, Tech Gig uh, for organizing uh, this webinar, and um, um, the administrators did a great job uh, organizing this mobile testing series. And um, as you see, this uh, uh, advanced mobile testing um, uh, this first slide. So, like I had uh, given the slide share direct link of the presentation which I have right now. So you can even click on that uh, and then get the presentation on your screen. For example, if you um, wanted to navigate quickly or if you want to go back during the presentation, you can be able to do so. So it's slideshare.net slash Ravindran and Tony Sami slash advanced iPhone mobile iPhone testing. So Without further delay, let's uh, move on to the index sheet. Probably um, it will uh, tell you what we will be covering during this one hour session. So So now the index sheet in your uh, desktop and um, I'll be uh, covering um, this um, as a practical approach like um, and also this is going to be um, an overview of um, uh, what is really happening right now in the industry. Uh, so um, I try to organize this um, uh, webinar as uh, for basic users also, like people who wanted to you know um, learn some mobile testing quickly, uh, and also uh, going to address the key challenges that we are actually facing during um, in practical mobile testing. So. just put forward my next screen. If you had downloaded uh, the slide share PPT, 
probably uh, in the slide share you may not be able to see uh, the animations uh, in the screens but this is me that uh, like uh, this is in Paris me and uh, my wife and uh, probably you will get that in a moment yeah I think and then now I'm trying to broadcast another picture and if you see that uh, it's about to display in your screen right now <coughs> this is my baby and uh, and this is my previous organization where I worked as a scrum engineer in ST Ericsson uh, Norway and um, we built uh, VLAN, wireless LAN uh, uh, product for uh, an ST Ericsson board U8500 and uh, you could see that on your screen right now and uh, this is my um, current organization I have a Windows machine and uh, a Linux machine and a Mac machine which is like uh, so um, being uh, uh, delivering clients in 10 platforms I think um, we have to you know like show up something so they also wanted to um, show you another CD uh, uh, where I just put my interests on like I have great interests on robotics and renewable energy open source tools because I choose um, open source tools for uh, mobile testing automation in my unit though there are um, other open source automation tools are available I prefer open source tools another great area which is like uh, not um, really emerged in mobile uh, field so far uh, but uh, it's going to be uh, is usability so I have great interest on usability so I will be touching base uh, with the usability some usability concepts as well in this uh, webinar and because um, why usability is important and uh, why um, the mobile apps need to be uh, usable as good as um, uh, the native applications uh, why it has to be usable and uh, it may be a really useful app but if it is not usable nobody will use it this is the um, nutshell and um, in a mobile uh, environment uh, a user has the power of killing uh, an app my deleting an app is probably they can take at most three seconds to delete an app so the usability is really important when it comes to uh, mobile uh, applications so uh, how QA can um, contribute into usability that we will uh, discuss further he wanted to show another slide which is a little bit of a disclaimer that um, in some of the concepts some of the screens you may s probably see that uh, yeah, I may be wrong in some of the scenarios and I may be missing things I may not be able to you know like uh, though I spent a good amount of time to make this um, presentation uh, I was uh, really in a hurry so I may be missing things and um, some of the concepts I may be telling you 
and that uh, you may be uh, really not buying it and you may you have to feel free to uh, disagree with me and uh, argue with me if possible because in 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 the end we have the QA session uh, so you should be really arguing with me or debating me <coughs> in certain uh, things <coughs> So that is really important, yeah. So so the tar target audience uh, for the session, um, you can be a fresh uh, college pass out or still studying in college or um, a software tester already doing some kind of software testing and you want to be a software or mobile tester. and uh, automation testers and people want to do some level of automation in the mobile space uh, and uh, tech leads, team leads, test leads, and product managers and project managers and the rest of the people uh, can join in and uh, uh, take a look at this offline also. So let's uh, talk about mobiles so some of the facts uh, about mobile mobiles are like we have 6 billion mobile phones in the world and um, it's much uh, more than toilets and the mobile phone internet usage is surpassed PC internet usage um, I think last year, I think or even this year, I just heard very recently. And um, total mobile apps in Android Play, Google Play Store um, is almost a million and, uh, and in Apple Store it's almost the same, 800,000. So smartphone users spend at least 30 hours in their phones in a month which is almost a week of productivity basically. So, uh, so we should be really um, taking things seriously in when it comes to mobile. That is uh, why I've been, you know, like uh, posted that. So the, without further delay, we we'll let let's uh, jump into this uh, ecosystem. Um, it will be good for uh, the basic level of users. This the next uh, five minutes what we will uh, spend in the ecosystem and um, OEMs the original equipment manufacturers I think um, Samsung surpassed uh, Nokia and become the top uh, OEM in the mobiles uh, I think last year Apple also sells mobiles. So these are original equipment manufacturers, Nokia, Zati, Blackberry, Huawei, HTC. Z Zati and Huawei they are um, also selling a lot of mobiles in China. So like if you, they, I probably Zati will be the um, around uh, fourth largest uh, mobile phone OEM. Motorola, Sony, Toshiba, Lenovo, Seikam, JCB, etc. Um, the network e equipment manufacturers, Ericsson, Nokia Siemens Network, and uh, Huawei, Juniper, like they give the back end, the network equipments. And uh, chipset, chipset and board vendors, ST Ericsson, Qualcomm, I think uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon processor is the best processor in my views. MTK, MSTAR, the MediaTek is uh, the MTK, they sell uh, a lot of mobiles too. Uh, the, basically they sell the platforms and uh, people, uh, OEMs here, buy that and integrate it. Broadcom, Atheros, NVIDIA, uh, GPUs, I think NVIDIA Tehra is one of the best, their flagship GPU and um, Intel, Texas Instruments, Freescale, etc. 
so um, service providers for example the back end of uh, your mobile phone three Vodafone, Airtel, MTN, Singtel, Telstra. Singtel is Singapore and Telstra is uh, Australia and the at and probably US. Uh, MTN is South Africa. So mobile operating systems uh, as far as mobile operating systems I think Android probably Android is the most number of devices activated in Android. Recently he had around 79 percent of the devices smartphone um, devices run Android and um, uh, and then uh, iOS I think iOS has been a little bit down I hear so I think um, the latest uh, announcement is iPhone 5C for uh, cheaper uh, a little bit cheaper they are going to sell uh, 5C and uh, Windows Phone actually it is coming up very well because Nokia Lumia as many people started loving it and uh, it's going to be uh, one study says in 2015 uh, almost 15 percent of the smartphones will be running uh, Windows uh, operating system Windows 8 probably because but uh, it's a little bit over exaggerated uh, in info but still I feel that they'll cover a decent amount of market in, in the coming years because since Nokia has taken up that one Java meaning that Java users still there is a huge people uh, huge market for Java phones the low end phones is already available with us and the uh, BB it's uh, almost um, uh, dead Symbian is uh, dead because Nokia didn't release any Symbian phone for the past eight nine months I think Bada is I think already deprecated Samsung Wave came in Bada um, two devices they released after that it's duplicated WebOS I think the WebOS is a Palm OS which is uh, which we I used to make uh, applications uh, during 2002-03 Palm OS become WebOS HP bought them and become and then I think uh, probably LG will be purchasing there is some speculations in the market purchasing them and then selling devices on that. Jola is another operating system that is probably the Migo, Nokia's uh, deprecated uh, Migo. Nokia deprecated Migo not because the uh, Migo doesn't have potential. They wanted to focus on uh, Windows Phone so they deprecated it. So, But in a Finnish company um, uh, took that and they are probably making the phones in Jola OS. And then Ubuntu Edge, uh, they are planning to you know uh, uh, create a mobile, uh, but uh, they created an Indiegogo campaign, and but unfortunately they did not get the funding. Probably they may, may be getting, and uh, I wanted to see uh, some Ubuntu Edge devices in the near future. And uh, Firefox OS, it's it's a it's, it's a different approach. It's web uh, is the first web because like in um, other uh, operating systems, you see. Um, you see um, um, yeah I think you see um, apps first uh, approach but uh, Firefox OS is like I hear that it is web first approach where you all see the web applications around your phone and a uh, little bit sluggish but still the phone is really nice I hear the first phone came out for Firefox OS uh, up markets developers basically um, that is where uh, driving this uh, whole mobile uh, mobile testing mobile applications making and all that um, probably WhatsApp everybody must be having WhatsApp and uh, Nimbus uh, Nimbus is also like um, almost 150 million registered users are there so it's also uh, huge as compared to WhatsApp because we may not really um, uh, showing the plain vanilla uh, SMS, but uh, Nimbus has more options like chat rooms uh, and uh, you know presence. You know, you can see that people is online or not like that. And then uh, you have N World that is uh, you can send gifts and all that. Real raising is one of the latest sensation. I've been playing a lot. It's from EA Games and um, fantastic. I use that app. It's a uh, 
um, app for um, if you know it will record your um, uh, movements like if you are jogging you can just start that app and it will you know how many steps you've been uh, how many kilometers you've been running it will tell you running with friends is Zynga's uh, latest hit and it's also a very good app uh, like no, why I had put it like this is the ecosystem it is, you know, this is part of the ecosystem app makers or developers um, make apps you know they they make apps they display advertisements they they pay they get revenues they make custom applications and um, that drives this uh, whole thing um, if it is uh, so because uh, in a in a one million app total 1 million apps only 100 apps are displayed as top apps and uh, how can you really uh, go to the top and uh, is it really possible to you know like um, that uh, if you may even though you make a great app you, is it possible that is there any space left for you uh, to uh, you, you make uh, your know, somebody there is no social networking app so let me make a social networking app like that you cannot because uh, every app idea is been already made so I have uh, certain thoughts about it but I will be um, discussing that in the end so um, add networks like uh, so that is where um, the uh, developers get paid for so for example uh, you make an app and it's a great app you put that into the um, uh, App market and at least a thousand people are using it but how you get paid really if nobody is really paying you so this uh, you can display small ad snippers for example this uh, downloading another app or uh, some local store near you like ad near is uh, such kind of uh, ad vendor that you just need to put their code into your um, into your uh, SDK you make an app and you make a placeholder for that one so um, your app you open your app ad near will um, um, serve the ad for you like that same you can um, Apple have iAds and uh, Google have AdMob AdMob is a company and Google purchased it you just uh, so you, uh, people knows, know about um, Google AdSense how it works and all that you just take their code put it and then it uh, it display the relevant ads and the user clicks on that the um, developer get paid so the publisher ID gets paid same concept or share also so these are all the companies uh, some of the companies every company individually uh, searchable and you can search uh, of, uh, those companies and then you can uh, get more details for example Amubi is a Israel company and um, doing very well and uh, for example Smato um, is a um, very famous in Middle East the point is ad publisher for example uh, if I am coca-cola if then I want to display um, uh, a new product or new service uh, something uh, to iPhone 5 users only if I wanted to do that um, then I approach this ad mob or whatever ad uh, agencies, ad companies, ad networks. They will tell me that I have integrated Nimbus or uh, you know, um, uh, for example, uh, running with friends with me. So I have. Uh, so they, uh, your mobile will send the data to them. So if they put you put your code in that. So they will tell you that they will tell the ad publishers that uh, I have uh, 20,000 iPhone users. For example, in um, Norway, in I have 10,000 iPhone users. In Finland, I have 20,000 iPhone 5 users. They say that then that ad network um, companies will give the ad. So they will display into the relevant devices. So that's how that whole system works. Ad networks get the ads from the publishers. They talk to the app developers and make them put their code, uh, ad snippet into their code and build the app and uh, then users download it. They see that ads. That's how it goes. And then in, with respect to uh, mobile testing, so like we have this mobile test clouds that um, something like a device anywhere, Perfecto Mobile, Skirako Cloud, I, I, or, uh, I think I have another uh, mobile test cloud also so like I'm uh, I uh, been evaluating that 
let me just yeah so uh, c test c test have a cloud so and the monkey talk uh, monkey talk is a open source application and monkey talk have a cloud um, it's called the cloud monkey so what is this mobile test clouds is all about mobile test clouds are like um, so if I want to test um, uh, and because uh, being a developer uh, I can I cannot buy um, hundreds of devices together to make sure that my application is working or not and uh, uh, I'm not really sure that my application will work on all the devices so I need to make sure that I install that at least one time and then um, whether it is working or not installing properly or not I will uh, get to know so these clouds will integrate um, uh, live devices which means real physical devices probably they will read the um, video buffer and display into um, a Java applet for example uh, so if they they'll just read the exact mobile so uh, you subscribe to these services and they will display you all the uh, mobile phones they are actually connected and uh, they may be having sim also so you click on the device acquire that device for some time and then you will um, run your uh, tests you install something uninstall something you w check your features are working if your if your application is accessing internet you can find out and uh, different networks for example different networks different geolocations different devices uh, you can be able to check your mobile applications so that is why i am in giving introduction to this mobile device clouds and uh, nokia rda nokia remote device access is pioneer in this one they they made um, a lot of symbian and uh, s40 phones accessible for users for free but now it's no longer free for uh, uh, these services i think you need to pay uh, pay money to these uh, services uh, and some of the uh, service for example skiraco cloud they integrated um, almost all the japanese devices like uh, toshiba sharp uh, you know uh, device anywhere may not really be showing uh, toshiba device but uh, skiraco cloud shows so they based on different geolocations you should be really able to select this device clouds and based on your usage for example your app is actually an app for every user are you are targeting this uh, set of users or limited set of users based on that you can be able to you know um, plan your test and uh, we are still in this mobile handset and application ecosystem um, so uh, as I told you before the um, app stores play a great role in this because uh, for example you um, did the release and it went to the market and then people started uh, saying it's just crashing in my uh, device it's just not working and uh, the um, update is bad if they say that then it will be really difficult for you so um, you can get the exact uh, feedback from different people um, and that very moment after one day of uh, you 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 show up uh, you uploaded your app and then you um, just wait for a day and you will be able to um, get the right feedback because if you are if it is a new new app if 10 people are actually accessing and then they will all, all 10 of them are saying that it's a great app then uh, they are giving the five stars then you will really um, uh, uh, going to feel great about it yeah so uh, Google Play Apple App Store Windows Phone Marketplace Blackberry Upworld OV Store get jar you can get um, a lot of I think now it's they're mo mo most mostly uh, mostly into um, Android they're uh, showing up only but the get jar was a great source 
for uh, low end phones mobango and amazon app store also now coming because uh, most of the kindle specific apps are uh, in amazon kindle and kindle fire actually um, there are uh, mobile test crowdsourcing there are certain websites where you know you can crowdsource your mobile application testing that uh, for hire you test uh, test co and 99 tests uh, those apps i think yeah i'll just need to it's a test recovery actually it's not a test go yeah test recovery dot co so these websites work like uh, because uh, i have a specific request i want um, an um, an sms application so i want at least uh, uh, 10 people sending sms from Telstra network in Australia, from Australia, because I am a developer sitting in US. So um, I need to find few people, 10 people, 10 different SIM cards and 10 different devices to be sending these SMSs uh, from my app. So I go to Move for Hire or uh, then I um, um, create a project, I recruit users and then they will uh, test that for you. So by doing that in person, I fly to Australia and then buying SIM cards from there, show, showing proof and then buying SIM cards for the test purpose and then uh, by devices, it's, it's a big mess. So, so this um, crowdsourcing websites can really save your time. There are hybrid app making tools because in the in the case of mobile apps there is native app and the hybrid apps and uh, web apps like so in the native you can have like enterprise apps uh, like enterprise app or a mobile app uh, an app which um, made by the native SDK for example if you use Android SDK to make a mobile app Android app that is a native app it can be a mobile app it can be um, it can be the app developed by the OEM itself. For example, Samsung Chat On is also a native app, okay, made by the uh, uh, made by Samsung only. So um, Nimbus Nimbus Android is a native app. Um, if we are in a company making enterprise apps, they, it's not going to be public, but it uh, will be used for for set of users. For example, IBM all the IBMers going to get an app. That's an enterprise app. Hybrid apps. You are not really going to use the uh, native SDK, but you still uh, make an app. This Titanium Phone app and uh, Sensor Touch is a framework. RH Mobile. You can try out these three uh, hybrid app making tools. Then authorities, the 3GPP, 3GPP2, OMA, Open Mobile Alliance, OHA, Open Handset Alliance, and Wi-Fi Alliance, Bluetooth, SIG, NFC Forum. So everything in there is individually searchable. You can go there and take a look at that. Because our time frame is really short, so we cannot really cover everything. I cannot give a brief introduction of everything. And these are all the, uh, the now the best part test automation tools, open source tools. I am listing out almost all the tools now in the market. Some of them open source tools, some of them paid tools, some of them native tools, some of them native means native to that platform only because robot team can test only Android. Cross platform, for example, Calabash, it can test. Android and iPhone, RPM, Android and iPhone, like that, okay. Um, so, C-Test is a tool, paid tool, Monkey Talk, again, uh, it's a, I think, hopefully, it's a, it's open source, Cloud Monkey is paid, Telerik for iOS is free, Android Monkey, once you download and um, install the Android SDK, you will get Android Monkey UI Automator, it's uh, up to, tw if you have AP level 20, 21, I think UI Automator is there. Frank is only for iPhone, KF, iPhone, 
anteater i did not really tried that touch test not tried that but uh, got it from uh, some ppt uh, ui automation for ios it's there i tried that and it's really easy you uh, perform the scenario and it will really record it and then you can uh, save that script and then you can play it back Zucchini, not right test plant i tried it for some time um, because it's it's paid so we didn't really wanted to go for that um, there are certain other tools selenium web driver i uh, did not really try it out but i am using color bash right now so i am using color bash to test android and iphone uh, people are writing scripts i can come back to that little bit later other initiatives like limo is one of the initiative uh, happened in korea a few companies uh, oems did that uh, which is like I did not really posted everything there because uh, in my experience Rinaro one is ST Erickson's initiative when I was working there mobile line is an enterprise mobility application which I really like it and uh, mobile uh, mobile antivirus tools are there mobile VAS companies are there flurry and uh, local electrics uh, I think flurry is uh, the analytics tools like if you integrate flurry API you will get deep, a lot of data. Uh, for example, you want to know who are all, um, if you, uh, for example, you made an app, you posted it into the uh, Google Play, and, and uh, you want to know who uh, who are all your users using Wi-Fi to access your mobile, and who are all in network, uh, who are all in what OS. Up to some level of um, information, your Google um, dashboard, published dashboard itself gives. But if you want more data, that kind of APIs will, if you integrate those APIs, it will support you. So now we are into the next slide. OEM handset testing is application testing. So in OEM, uh, I mean the original equipment manufacturer, they actually uh, um, um, do some test they they before making the app they do the test um, they for example Samsung they they have chat on as an app and they have other apps for example SMS or MMS itself an app SMS your phone book your um, your uh, calls your call history uh, your browser which is there inside that um, that itself an app so um, it has to be exclusively tested for example the contacts app it, you, you should be able to um, add new contact save the contact edit the contact and then uh, for example if it is a calendar and then you have to you know calendar you should um, add an entry um, as a you know internet you should be able to go to the browser and uh, navigate to the files navigate different uh, web browsers navigate different websites to be exact you should have the settings and then you should be able to set up ringtones so many things being performed by um, the OEM itself before you know uh, you know giving you the selling out the mobile they indeed um, perform a lot of test and uh, that is OEM testing if you are a handset tester mobile handset tester it's, it's a full phone testing you supposed to do there you will test the application specific to that uh, that particular platform. You will also test the all the other applications. You will integrate it, and then, for example, uh, integration testing happens. Like you receive a call, and then from the call, um, you uh, call log. You say options will be there. From there, you should uh, be able to save that into uh, the phone book. So there is an integration from call log to phone book. So that integration works or not? So that kind of uh, there will be uh, so much. The, from there, from the call log, you will be able to send an SMS or not? Then you will be opening another application called SMS. You will do some settings. It should reflect in the settings like that. So that is OEM testing. In the applic mobile application testing, whether it's a native or hybrid or a web app, it will be performed by that particular um, service company who is actually making that app or the developers who is actually making that app. So, um, so there is a, uh, so you will not in uh, in that application testing environment you will not be testing SMS. 
It will not be testing that SMS is going properly or not. It will not be testing that browser is working or not. It will test only around that app. Okay, so that's how it goes. Um, there may be some integrations from your app to other apps. For example, um, for example, WhatsApp or Nimbus. It in, it's talked to the phone book and it fetches that phone book information displaying you for for example nimbus nimbus have a calling you can make voip call so uh, for calling you sh it will nimbus goes there fetches your uh, phone book call log and then show it that kind of integration testing also will be happen will happen in um, uh, in the application testing yeah let me go to the next slide So I show you something like uh, now I am showing you the what all the other tests um, happens in um, OEM testing. How it is so different from um, the actual mobile app testing. Uh, so you must be seeing um, the screen. It's um, drop testing. I'll quickly navigate to the screens and uh, so. We'll talk about. We'll talk something um, more. So you can also Google it because this presentation will be always available. Because being in a um, webinar, there may be certain delays, but you will be able to see that uh, this complete presentation in slide share even now, and uh, after um, this whole thing overs. OEM testing, keypads tested testing. You'll see. The keypads are actually how much time it's pressable, and it will be automated robots will be pressing that keypad. In OEM environment, you will see bending test. You can uh, take a note, and then you can be able to see that certain Newton pressure will be applied to that um, uh, mobile, and then yeah, drop water test. You will be you know like there will be water on top of the mobile and the dust box test will be shake in the dust box twisting test and uh, it's like a twist the mobile wearing wear and tear wearing test like that there those are all OEM specific tests if you are a mobile tester will be working in a OEM company like Samsung or LG or Nokia you should be knowing this so it's like a Field testing will happen in OEM. Um, tools like TEMS, Sony Ericsson stuff, that one. Um, you will be moving around in the field in a car, and then you will uh, take logs, and uh, there is, uh, and then analyze those logs, and it will be in half rate, full rate like that. Call performance testing, you will uh, use tools like Optis Inno Wireless. You can Google that later. Uh, battery testing, test the battery itself, how it's really reliable, that one, because for in a in um, battery is the one of the biggest pain because there is no much innovation in the battery because most smartphones uh, came too much far after um, iPhones, but in the in the in the battery there is no much innovation. And um, native application testing, power consumption testing, how much power has been consumed, Bluetooth wireless LAN. You test the Bluetooth, you will test the wireless LAN, and uh, NFC, NFC RF everything you will test. Call quality testing tools like SwissQual, you will use that. In the case of application testing, you will only test that OS or that device. Um, you will not really testing uh, native applications unless there is a, a great um, integration. Only around the app you will test. Functional testing, integration testing, performance testing, security testing, and usability testing. And if it's customer app, you will do the UAT as well. And native apps made by native SDKs, hybrid apps are actually made by hybrid tools. Web apps, HTML5, you will be able to do that. HTML5 geolocation and video uh, is also there. So the, the good amount of uh, um, web apps will be coming in the future, but it's not that much robust as a native app. But and as in the testing perspective, you can be able to test everything using Calabash. And why I call this as an advanced session? Like uh, so, this the the test strategy has to be uh, playing a key role when it comes to mobile testing. Um, as I said, like um, 
um, how many devices I should buy. Like, um, is it five devices sufficient? No. You should um, buy the devices. For example, you, you, your market, uh, you are making an uh, app for high-end users, then you should make sure that um, uh, in the, you should study the market. If your um, market is between 2.3 OS to 4.0, you should buy two devices at least. One is 2.3 and one is 4.0. So you should buy that. So two devices, you can be able to cover 80%. Okay, and uh, do I have to test emulator and device or both? Uh, because emulator, um, you can test it in emulator when the when the mobile uh, if it's in the very basic stages. But if uh, it's testing in the device is really advisable. And uh, do I have to use ambassador or social media? Um, I think you should really uh, use some ambassador. For example, I need to test my app is working in Sri Lanka or not. I'll really have an ambassador in Sri Lanka who is telling me that after I have the uh, build ready, I'll check, make sure that uh, he helps me out in there. So once I release into the market, for example, uh, after uh, it will take almost five days for an approval in Android Apple App Store. After that, if it is not working there, it will be a big blow for me. So you should use um, sh uh, sharing tools like test flight or up bundle to make sure that they uh, check it before you um, release the app. So I wanted to show uh, in that uh, so some more things actually, but you can um, I'll address that a little bit later because I wanted to show you um, Kala Bash test cases. I I actually. Um, um, what kind of test cases you should write. So um, you should be really writing um, a test cases which uh, covers the, uh, all the aspects of man-machine interface. Okay, that is how it goes. So I think um, uh, we'll go further and if we have time later we will be able to say, uh, do this. MOS, mean opinion score in the um, mobile application testing. So um, you, you should circulate within your company and then make sure that you create this kind of MOS sheet and then they fill up that one based on performance, functionality and connectivity and usability. And if you really comfortable with that one, you will be able to release that. So power consumption, there is a, um, you should really be testing power consumption in your app. Your app also will uh, differ if you don't close the thread for, uh, so it will start using CPU. CPU more CPU usage will lead into the power uh, failures. Your users will um, the battery will be drained so soon. So you should be really doing power consumption testing. There is Power Tutor and GSAM, Battery Life Pro, Easy Battery Life. There are certain tools. I have a method also described here. If you look at the PPT later, you will be able to see that it's a very foolproof method I have. So uh, you can use this new method. Okay, to uh, make sure that you are actually doing some kind of power tests. You should also do some usability test, and um, around uh, up to five to ten people, you should say uh, you should hire or you should call up to the, your office, and give the pro product to their hands, and uh, what they really think. They should think out loud, and uh, then you will have a test protocol. And based on your test protocol, you will ask some questions and they will uh, think out loud and tell you that uh, what they feel. You should record that and give this feedback to the product managers. If you do this usability testing, a lot many things you will be able to find out in practically in the app. Okay. In test automation, uh, now like uh, I wanted to show you um, an open source tool called Kala Bash. Okay because um, there is a couple of videos I uh, uh, I shown here. Kala Bash is the tool which I identified and came ended up after a year of um, searching for a mobile test open source tool which is really easy to write scripts. The scripts are really in a readable format. I can show you some scripts. If you see the scripts. The, this is the Cucumber scripts. When I press sign in, then I wait for one second, I clear input field number one, 
I enter my username into the input field number one. So this is actually a test case in Calabash. This is a test case. People who don't know anything about Java, anything about uh, um, um, uh, technical uh, logic or code, uh, they can be able to write steps. What I mean to say is, this is really simple. People uh, lost touch to technical code. They don't. Uh, they uh, used Java 10 years ago, and you were actually asking them to do some automation in mobile. They may not be able to do that. But if you use Calabash, it's very easy to set up. For example, uh, and then run. Actually, right now, see, I have this script here, which which is like uh, I have my emulator up here. I have this uh, command prompt where I am going to just issue a command because and it is actually also a complete suit that uh, when you uh, are trying to uh, create and build Calabash. So Calabash, you should go to calabash.sh. Uh, if you type that in Google, you will be able to find out. Now I will try to run a simple test case. I'm just saying Calabash Android run because I installed this framework. Calabash uses this particular Cucumber script, what I am going to call, will use Ruby as a backend. Ruby uses Robotim as a backend. Robotim uses the um, Google instrumentation as a ba backend. It's almost the it's like doing things in Robotim. So like now I am going to just run this script. It's running my scenario. Okay testing my first script which is there this is a feature my file is sign in dot feature this is a scenario I'm testing a scenario then I wrote the steps okay You could see that actually it is trying to communicate with my device. Probably I, it is inactive for a little bit longer time. But Calabash is the that tool for mobile testing automation. So I uh, I request all of you advanced mobile u mobile testing users, automation users, should really use Calabash for your uh, automation purpose. And it can test real devices. It can test two devices at a time. There is a company called Less Painful is taking uh, care of it and maintaining it. So you, the support is support and update is also quick, and it's completely open source. Okay. And browser testing. I had listed out some browser testing tools. Like uh, for example, uh, you are actually making. Um, mobile web app um, for example mo fa mobile dot google dot com mobile dot facebook dot com m dot twitter dot com but you can use directly you can use w3 mobile ok checker or google mobilizer to make sure that is it well structured that you can just do it in in a few minutes you will be able to tell you what are all the problems are there in that particular mobile web pages and you can also use Opera Mini Simulator to check whether you are uh, how it will look like in Opera. Basically, you should really test your um, mobile web app in, um, uh, for example, the based on the browser engine. So, Apple and um, Android and BlackBerry, uh, all all of them uses uh, WebKit as a browser engine, which the, the engine which renders the elements in the screen. So you should test in either Apple or Android and Opera. Probably you should test, uh, for example, Nokia phones if you are also delivering mobile, uh, because Nokia uses Jico as their browser engine. So you should also test with one Jico engine. So you should really search what is really a browser engine and who are all using what browser engine. Based on that, you can strategize your mobile browser testing. Okay. 
and I also want you to subscribe to this mobile QA zone which is a community for uh, mobile testers and um, uh, there is a chat box here uh, is there people are available and uh, you can sign up and you can chat with the users um, who are all doing mobile testing there is a lot of materials and content we are adding there so I want you guys to check there uh, if you subscribe I will be there other people will be there if you are getting into some practical problems of a mobile testing advanced level we will be able to fix that and help you out I listed some links Kala Bash, Appium and you should also take a look at this Quirks mode which is actually uh, if you are developing a mobile web web app you should really check out Quirks mode and uh, you should be able to get a lot of inputs from there in the end I have a little bit cheat sheet um, it start from the basic users how sh how to start learning mobile testing St uh, I actually uh, answered that to go to android.com and download um, uh, Android SDK and then start uh, building your first app how to test iPhone applications uh, you should have iPhone and a Mac and Xcode because like you you need to you know run the automation and all that so uh, you cannot t uh, test the iPhone applications in Windows do I need to um, buy a tool for mobile testing automation the answer is no and you should use color patch how can I take my application logs when I'm performing Android manual testing you can if you have Eclipse you can go to the DDMS and take it you can also use an application called a locket because uh, sometimes uh, you, your customers may be saying some problems that uh, they are, uh, and then you cannot uh, uh, ask them give me logs. So you, you can ask install a locket which will uh, actually uh, log all the things which is happening in the Android mobile and then you can ask them to save that and then they, you can get that. Okay. You can also use Android Monkey for stress testing. Okay. If you don't have a Mac and you have an iPhone for testing the iPhone application and you can use iPhone configuration utility you can search for that and then use that to take logs okay and then you can screencast your Android applications using Android screencast and for iPhone application testing you should register your UUID with the build system so you should take your developers help for that Windows phone testing you should really have Zune and uh, um, Zap installer okay so you should also have the developer account because without developer account your uh, Zap installer will not work okay why mobile testing strategy is important because you need to cover the different networks different OS different screen sizes different processor speeds and different OEM vendors so you should de really define a strategy what uh, OS I'm going to test my app because you, you may be really testing and everything will be fine but after that it may not be really working for a user so you should really form a strategy Telerik for iOS I want you guys to check it's an amazing tool yeah, you can record and play back okay but the only thing is you need to add the libraries and build the app but web apps are directly testable using Telerik okay So this is how it goes and um, I think I'm almost in the end. I also want you guys to um, download Nimbus and give me feedbacks about that because like uh, being um, an application, um, it has 10 platforms, um, it's available in 10 platforms and you can also go to this Nimbus beta group to make sure that you also join in there and uh, help me in testing okay so my final slide I hope uh, so uh, I thank you all of you uh, that uh, you know joining and watching it probably some of you will be watching this um, in offline so but um, you can shoot out your questions uh, to me to set up your uh, mobile testing and uh, like if you have any doubts in the color bash etc you'll be able to talk to me in that so my uh, email id is ra 
2012vi at gmail.com so you can connect with me and ask questions if you really have any. Uh, well, I've already assigned you some of the questions, Ravindran. Can you see them? Yeah, let me just check. Okay, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Difference between emulator and simulator? Actually, it's uh, it's both same. It's uh, it's there is no big difference. You can, it's just a name, yeah. Link to download the PDF, yeah, uh, it's there. You can, Arun Kumar asked a um, link to download the PDF. It's there in SlideShare. I can, uh, you can search for Ravindran and Tony Sami. Test Droid Cloud, Test Droid Cloud uh, fr uh, from Huck um, is one. Uh, I did not really tried it, but um, I heard it is really good. It's like a prototype of a mobile device is created and uploaded to the mobile cloud for testing, correct? Um, yeah, for uh, Priyanka asked that. It's like, yeah, it's a uh, end of the day, it's a real device. You are interacting with the real device, okay? Uh, so if you uh, make a call to that particular number which is there, it will receive a call, okay? And Rajesh, for testing apps for India, which could we can opt for? I didn't really uh, understood. Uh, probably it's uh, about the mobile clouds, and um, it's not about um, a country. Basically, it's um, so you, you can like. Uh, I think um, we can skip that. Any Zarmin? Um, Zarmin, I really don't, did not really. Uh, I heard about it, but I did not really use. Um, best developing software for Android platform. It's like, okay, it's a very basic level of question, but uh, you should use um, Android SDK. Any tools available for testing Windows 8 mobile app, Rajesh? Um, so Windows 8 mobile apps, uh, like, uh, so I tried uh, some kind of unit testing in using NUnit. So, uh, so it's not a really very famous. Uh, so there is no much tools available. Any tools available for um, test battery? Kuberin asked that. Uh, right now, like you can do a manual testing in battery. There is a detailed procedure I had given in that slides. But you should really use Agilent or Andrisu, which is a little bit expensive. Um, but you can still be able to use that tool. That setup is given there. Any open source uh, tools available for doing performance te testing for native apps? There is no open source tools available. So you can really measure that um, by writing custom scenarios using Calabash. For using Calabash, do you, don't you think we need to know programming language? No. Uh, Kailash asked actually, you don't really need to know uh, uh, any programming language. It's really readable English. That is why I prefer that um, I, I want people to you know use Calabash. Um, so you can really go and uh, take a look at the videos in that link and uh, you will really enjoy it. I'm an iOS developer, Preetham. Uh, so what do you suggest me for efficient app performance? You should really write performance metrics and uh, like uh, it's, it's a little bit not relevant so I'm skipping that. Um, Manual tester and uh, want to move to uh, mobile testing. Yeah, it is really possible, Pankaj. Uh, so you should really be able to learn all those things and make sure that you um, make and useful and usable mobile apps. Because uh, I really count on you that um, you guys that you we make good mobile apps that people will love to use. Supply, uh, yeah, a mobile. Uh, so Narendra asked that this presentation in mobile QA zone. It's already there in mobile QA zone. Suggest any professional course to get started with uh, mobile application. There is no much professional course available in the market, Pankaj. Um, but uh, like, uh, I hope something will come up soon. 
what is the scope of mobile testing in India and outside? Uh, not relevant right now. I will really see some technical questions. Selenium grid can be used for performance testing. Yes, you can. But I did not really try it. Where will uh, the, the more details? Okay, Yogesh asked where he can find more details about Kala Bash. Go to the Kala C A L A B A dot S H website. You will be able to find out everything there. Sri Kant asked, will open source tools advisable while we create app for customer? No. Yes, it is uh, uh, um, advisable. Yes, it is reliable. Okay. Uh, end of the day, you are talking to an um, app. And this open source tools helping you in testing. So you will really see the magic when it's actually doing the testing. But if you have a lot of budget and your customer is ready to pay for the paid tools, you really do that. Okay? Like they are also running the company. Which tool is best for performance testing for iOS and Android mobile testing? Nothing really like uh, so. Uh, Srinivas Babu asked that. Nothing really. Um, uh, Came uh, came up in my mind like uh, which is uh, which is robust because uh, I didn't really uh, uh, something will come up very soon. Some uh, okay get Nimbus dot com to download like so some Manoj asked actually it's not the one you should uh, check go to slide share there you can be able to get the uh, PPT. Will Calabash support test cases outside the application? No, it won't. It will only support test cases which is in that application because it's actually end of the day it is instrumentation. Rajesh, good question. We are actually facing the problem, but for that we do um, a little bit of recording and uh, like that stuff. But um, which is uh, we did, we approached, uh, we use uh, uh, we use um, a different um, tool which is inbuilt in that actually. We use diff instrumentation for that, Rajesh. Uh, so, can we perform functional testing through Callabash? Yes, you can do per perform uh, functional testing. Uh, yes, for the client server app, Mohammed asked. So, for, uh, for if it is a client server app, client uh, uh, based stuff, you can do that in Callabash. In uh, server side, st side stuff, you should use Python. Automation testing on actual devices, Mohit he asked. It is possible I am using Calabash in actual devices only okay can we automate the test case which are for our application with the integration of mobile probably this is a integration it's a, it won't, you won't be able to test the away from that app so augmented view testing because uh, Kalakar asked yes if your application is there augmented like I don't think you can you can do augmented view testing like uh, I didn't really tried but uh, if you have found out something like you should be able to really post it in some uh, forums like mobile uh, QA zone please suggest me some uh, open source tools for Android automation uh, I think I want you to use Kala Bash Mohammed Sahib so it is actually one of the best tool uh, it's, a, it's a good functional testing tool you should really use Kala Bash and write uh, um, readable English test cases using Cucumber and Ruby will test that. You can also write custom steps. You can, um, it's a maintainable, uh, it's maintainable um, test case you can write using Calabash. And then I could, uh, so hybrid apps, uh, uh, Kupraj asked about hybrid apps. Actually hy hybrid apps are nothing but same mobile apps but uh, somebody want to make a mobile app in iOS and Android and uh, it's a simple app so they don't want to use both the native platform they don't want to use two developers for that work they can use phone gap or Arhocho mobile so one uh, they code it in one place they make two mobile two mobile apps it will deliver into two places that is why uh, uh, the simple mobile apps hybrid uh, tools are really effective uh, you can quickly make apps in a week you can make a very good app but in the case of uh, native mobile application tools uh, native SDK you have to hire two people and they have to they will uh, take a lot of time but of course if you are making a robust application you should use native tools native tools but simple applications you can use hybrid Sumati asked please tell the relation between Cucumber and Calabash actually Cucumber is 
Calabash is a framework. Cucumber is the where you write your scripts. Cucumber uses Ruby to um, talk to the instrumentation. Instrumentation again, indeed, talk to the um, mobile phone, whether it is an emulator or the device, and your you will be able to talk to the um, phone and uh, perform your functional testing. Okay. I think um, I hope uh, I answered all the questions. So if you have mo any more questions, you should really able to uh, write me. I think uh, ra2012 vi at uh, gmail.com. And you can also um, comment on the tech gig um, where the, this video will be uh, recorded and it will be uh, uh, available in tech gig website. Um, if you have comments, you can uh, you know write it as a response. I will be able to reply that in TechKick website. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for answering the questions, Ravindra. It was a great presentation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for conducting this session. I would also like to thank all our participants for their support in making this webinar a success. The recording of the session will be available on TechKick.com on the webinar page by tomorrow. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank you so much.